Okay, so guys, chapter one, your very, very basic foundations, the easy stuff, okay? Um, the very first thing that comes up in chapter one is the metric conversions, okay? Like so many centimeters is equal to how many kilometers, okay? Decimeters to megameters, okay? These kinds of conversions. This chart is taken straight out of your textbook. Now, I know it's hard to see on the PowerPoints I gave you. I apologize. Do you need to know every single metric prefix on here? No, you don't. Okay. Again, I know it's going to be hard to see on the paper in front of you. The ones you are responsible for are in blue. So that would be mega down through nano. These prefixes can be used with meters, liters, seconds, okay? Um, really any unit. You know, we talk about megawatts, that's a unit of power, okay? We talk about milliseconds, nanoseconds, okay? These are all different prefixes that we can use. And you need to be able to convert back and forth between them, sometimes without a calculator. Right? Um, if you see these letters, SI, I think it was written on the previous slide, Système International, it just means the metric system. I believe there is only one other country in the entire world that does not use the metric system, and I can't, the name of that country is escaping me, but most of the world uses the metric system, okay? These are some units that we're going to see a lot. Kilograms, meters, seconds, temperature. Sometimes we will be in units of Celsius. Most of the time, however, we will be in units of Kelvin. We will never, 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 ever will we be in Fahrenheit, okay? When we get to electrochemistry, we'll start talking about amps and coulombs and things like that, okay? You all are familiar with the mole, okay? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What I always find interesting, you know, these are the abbreviations is this really that big of an abbreviation from that word? Really? We've just taken a letter off. Anyway. <coughs> Let's talk precision and accuracy. Okay. The word accuracy means whatever measurement you have just made. The number that you have recorded is very close to the true value, the true number. You have a, a weight, a mass, that has a mass of exactly 25 grams. And when you measure it, you get 24.99. That's pretty accurate. Okay. The word precision, however, you cannot use the word precision with just one measurement, one number. Precision refers to multiple numbers, a series of measurements. Precision means you've taken three measurements, and those three measurements are very close to each other. Okay? So, let's say I have an object that has a true mass of 25 grams. And I put it on the balance and I get this, 20.1 grams, 20.2 grams, 19.9 grams, okay? Looking at these three numbers, would you say that they are relatively close to each other? Yes. These are pretty precise. These are close to each other. Are they accurate? No, they're not. Okay. 
So these would be a set of measurements that are precise but not accurate. That would be like this middle picture here. Okay. What about this bottom picture? What would you say about precision and accuracy there? Yeah, for both. Good for both. Good precision, good accuracy. This would be a neither situation. Okay, everybody's favorite, sig figs. I will tell you guys that on the AP exam, sig figs are not a huge deal, okay? If the number is meant to, if the final answer is meant to have three significant figures and your answer has two, you're probably in good shape. If, however, you know, the answer, your answer has nine and the true answer is supposed to have two, then they're going to ding you for that. They're going to take off points for it. Okay? So it's not a huge deal as long as you're close, but it is worth just refreshing your memory. Okay? Depending on who you had for your Chem 1 class, there's a whole different set of rules. Different teachers teach it different ways. I have two rules, and they work for everything. Okay? If you're given a number where you physically see a decimal point, there is actually a dot in the number. Scan your eyes from left to right, and the first non-zero number you come to is the first one that counts, and everything after counts. So this first example has three. What if I change this number to look like this? What if I put a zero there? Does it still have three sig figs? No. Now it has four. Remember, the first non-zero number counts, and everything to the right is significant. So 0 0.04860 would have four sig figs. Okay? And it doesn't have to be just small decimal numbers. It could be, you know, whole numbers like this. This has a physical decimal point. Same rule. All five of these are significant. If a number does not have a decimal point, okay, like neither one of these examples actually has a dot in the number, then you do the opposite. Move your eyes from right to left. Again, start counting at the first non-zero number. So tell me, is that zero significant? Yes or no? No. What about this one? Yes. So these three numbers are the significant ones. Now, we are going to do a lot of problems, specific, especially in the beginning of the year, where you're asked to convert something into units of something else. Really simple example. Okay. If I said, you know, I'll use the number on the board, 216 centimeters equals how many inches? Okay. You don't actually need to do that calculation, but you would need to use this conversion factor. When you get, you put it, put the numbers in your calculator, up comes an answer. How do you know how many significant figures to round your final answer? Where do you look? How do you know? Should I use these numbers as a guide? No. Okay. These are called, this is called a conversion factor. Conversion factors are considered what are called exact numbers. They do not count towards your sig figs. So if I don't look here, where do I look? To get how many I want. Where do you look? Okay. You would look to the original given number. Okay. Don't look, don't use your conversion factors. You look at the original number and how many sig figs does that have? 
3. So whatever comes up in your calculator, you need to round it to 3 sig figs. Okay. Now, what's on this slide, you all probably do so quickly and without even thinking that you probably don't even remember learning this rule because it's so second nature to you. 99.99999% okay. of what we do in here is going to either be multiplying or dividing. And when you do that, round your final answer to the fewest number of sig figs. This number has three. This number has two significant figures, so I want my final answer to have two. Somebody asked me in the previous, um, in last class, what do you do if a problem has multiple steps? Should you round at each step? No. Don't round until your final, final, final answer. And where do you look? You look back to the original numbers given to you in the problem. Um, there are a very few times, this does not come up often, where you'll be adding or subtracting. And I'm telling you, nobody ever remembers this rule because you use it so infrequently. When you're adding or subtracting something, you do not count sig figs. You look at number of decimal places. This number has one. This number has three. So I need my final answer to have one decimal place. Don't forget that rule. Everyone always forgets this one. Okay. Now we're going to start crunching some numbers here. This method here is called dimensional analysis. It's what you use to convert one unit to something else, to another unit. Um, some teachers call it train tracks. Some teachers write it out just like this. You may have your own method for doing something like this. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it. I am not going to ever say that my way is the only and right, correct way. There are multiple ways to solve these problems. Whatever way you choose to go, great. Be aware, however, that on the AP exam, and so I do the same, you must show your work. I know for some of you that is a big pain in the butt. Okay? But I'm telling you, on the AP exam, sometimes there will be a 10-point problem, and the final answer is only worth one point. The rest of those nine points are for showing the, the method, how you got there. Okay. This is just written out in a nice way so that you can see the units cancel. Okay. But I want you to try this. Okay. Let me just introduce this problem to you. I have given you right here three conversion factors that you are probably not familiar with. And let me just say right now, you do not need to memorize these. These are units that they use in the horse racing community. They typically don't measure things in miles, meters, things like that. They use units of furlongs and rods. Okay. What I want you to do is this problem. It says the Kentucky Derby, that's a horse race, 1.25 miles in length. I want you to convert that distance into three separate units. How many rods is that? How many meters is that? How many kilometers is that? So you should have three final answers. And let me say again, there is no one way to do these. I'm going to put up in a few minutes how I have chosen to solve them. You may have chosen a different way, and that's totally fine. Try it. Talk it out if you get stuck.
there's the first answer in rods. The answer that comes up in the calculator is exactly the number 400. Why did I have to put a decimal point there? Tell me, sir. Uh, to ensure that it's accurate to a Okay. To make sure it's has the correct number of sig figs. And remember, do not use conversion factors. You go back to the original number printed in the problem. If that point was gone, the number just plain old 400 has how many significant figures? Just one. And you'd probably lose a point for that. Okay. Keep going. 